I've recently become obsessed with finding this crazy purple mushroom known as Amethyst Deceiver. Not only does it look insane, but just like many other fungi, it works miracles for our natural world. This purple beauty is a mycorrhizal fungi, meaning it works insanely well for the roots of plants, but more on that later. So I'm having to jump in the car because where I live, there's not that much woodland, let alone mature beech trees, which is where I'm gonna find that purple goodness. So where I've come to, this is predominantly an oak woodland. Look at the size of this big old oak tree here. Oak and holly, a lot of bramble on the ground. So not sure how many mushrooms I'm gonna find. Fungi is often referred to as the neglected kingdom of life. We used to think of it as a plant, but they're actually more like animals. Because unlike plants, they get their food from external sources. Like us, they're heterotrophs. I mean, honestly, the depths of value fungi brings to this world cannot be understated. The antibiotic, penicillin, is a fungi that's changed the course of modern medicine. It forms a big part of our cuisine, not just those fancy shiitake mushrooms you buy in the shops, but yeast. Yeast is a fungi responsible for our bread and our beer. Scientists have demonstrated fungi's ability to efficiently navigate through puzzles and complex pathways, potentially helping us map our urban infrastructures. It is now considered a brilliant renewable and degradable material. Adidas created the Stan Smith's Milo, a classic trainer which they've now created from mycelium. And mushrooms can literally control our minds. Many enjoy the cognitive release that comes from consuming psychedelic mushrooms, recreationally or as a form of treatment of depression or addiction. But I guess what I'm most interested in is how they can help us rewild and restore nature. Because here at Leaf Curious, we believe that rewilding is a solution to some of the biggest problems that we face. And until now, I don't think I've really given fungi the attention it deserves because it seems like it underpins all life. Oh shoot, not what I'm looking for. Okay, my fungi senses are tingling. I mean, look at the size of this oak tree here. There's quite a few mushrooms in and around all of this bramble beneath this oak tree, so I'm gonna do it. Don't think wearing shorts was the best idea for this. Oh, ow. It just gives me, it reminds me of a wizard. It's like wizard vibe, that one. In all the videos I've seen so far, they haven't been like, oh, you need to be in this type of woodland. They've just been like, here's loads of amethyst receivers on a stump. And I'm like, well, look, here's my stump. And look, wouldn't, <laughs> there's nothing, but wouldn't that have been great? The quest goes on. So this may be somewhat evident right now, but I am not an expert when it comes to identifying mushrooms. But please, those of you that have recognized some of the mushrooms in this video, just let me know what they are down in the comments. Look at this, I just found a bone like resting on this tree here. I don't know what that's a bone of. Something's come along and like nibbled it while it's like perching here and then just, I mean, that's an even more like obscure thing to find than like the amethyst. Find a bone of a deceased animal that's been like resting on a tree. You know, what are the chances of me seeing that? Can you tell I'm getting a little bit, a little bit annoyed I'm not finding this. Determined not to be deceived, I decided that I needed to head to a larger, older forest. I have come to Epping Forest where the trees are taller and hopefully the mushrooms are plentiful. This is why we're here, beach. Baby, the beach. Now although I'm just a little bit obsessed with finding this purple mushroom, it's important to remember that that beautiful thing that we see on top of the ground is just the fruiting body, it's the tip of the iceberg. That bit we see above the ground is the fruiting body of the fungus, it's the reproductive part containing spores. But what goes on beneath is what makes fungi such a valuable element for our ecosystems. Beneath the ground, you have the vast networks of mycelium. The world's largest living organism is an underground network of mycelia spanning more than nine square kilometers. The mycelium produce fine strands of hyphae and it's how the fungi feeds. Amethyst deceivers are a type of mycorrhizal fungi forming symbiotic relationships with plants in the soils with the roots. The microbial fungi make their way into the roots where they exchange sugars and nutrients with the plants. The real benefits to the plants comes from the way the mycelium develop with a network of fine filaments known as hyphae, 
which covers an area often 700 times greater than the root system of the plant, not only drawing in extra nutrients, but also storing and exchanging these nutrients between other trees in the forest. In just one gram of forest soil, there can be over 200 meters of microbial threads. On the surface, looking at our ecosystems, it's very easy to assume that plants are the foundations of life, but the real foundations are the networks of mycelium in our soils. Something which I can't stop thinking about is that it could just be on a tree right by me and because I don't look at that tree, I don't see it. So any tree I see that I think, I'm just going straight to it. Trouble is, is everything I see, I just think, oh, well, it could be there. Come on, be here, come on, something. But the other thing is that they're very common as well, which is kind of like a wind up because I just don't get why I can't find them. I see something purple. I see something purple. Oh, it's just a hat. That's one of the biggest windblown trees I've seen in a long time. Again, you know what did this, right? Fungus. Big old mature beech trees. They're not purple. I don't think, no, they're not the ones I'm looking for. I've seen these a lot. Look, I know this video is saying just how amazing fungus is, but at this point, I don't care about any other fungus other than the amethyst deceivers. And they're just, just not here. Wow, this thing is huge. Jesus, it's so powdery. Look at this. Oh, that is massive. I refuse to believe that it's a common fungus. I just refuse. Hey, look, a jumper. If I'd have picked this stuff up, I'd have like half an outfit by now. I'd be walking around without any pants on, but I'd have a hat and a jumper and one shoe. Could this be an old one? I don't know if this could be an old one. It's giving me vibes that it could have been purple, but this looks like it could have been it. <gasps> oh, okay, what's going on here? What, what's this one? I honestly thought that looked quite purple for a second. Just can't help but feel that that was once purpler. Fungi occupy around one third to a half of all of the living mass in our soils. This makes them incredibly important to carbon sequestration. It's long been thought that trees, or even the leaf litter, are the main carbon stores. But really, the trees are just the funnel down to the fungi sponges. Fungi play a key role in nutrient cycling, in decomposing tissues, making them available and more accessible again in our soils. This is no more evident than in forests. Many of the fruiting bodies I was seeing were those feeding on the dead and decaying wood tissues. But I was also seeing pathogenic fungi, those which feed on the living tissues of trees. It's these invisible networks of mycelia which are responsible for the very functioning of our habitats. Without them, I think it's fair to say that life just wouldn't be the same on Earth. But if they're so important, how can we protect them and ensure their prosperity? The first step is to ensure that the delicate network of mycelium in our soils stay intact. This is why we must practice regenerative agriculture and ensure our old growth forests remain in place. But aside from protecting what's already there, we can also work with fungi in a few ways for habitat restoration. So our friends over at Mossy Earth, you know the guys with the really good rewilding videos all about the reforestation and rewilding projects they set up. Well, they're looking to start a project that will use ectomycorrhizal fungi, a type of mycorrhizal fungi that is associated with trees found in temperate regions, like up in Scotland, where they'll be looking to inoculate young trees, the saplings which they'll plant, with ectomycorrhizal fungi. This project is in its preliminary stages, but they hope it will decrease sapling morality while also increasing the growth and carbon sequestration rates of the trees. Mossy Earth gets stuff done. It's why I'm proud to say that I've been working with them recently, and I encourage you to become a member too, to not only follow along with this project and others, but to fund future rewilding across the world. Use the link in the comments or the description to let them know you came from Leave Curious. <sighs> Okay, now this one looks creepy. This one looks kind of gross. I'm gonna touch it, it looks sticky. Oh, it's so wet. I can see why people get freaked out by fungus. Fungus and the human body is not a nice thing. Fungus in nature, on the other hand, can be a nice thing, if you know where to find it, which I don't. Any, um, any amethyst to sieve around here? No, no, okay, okay. What about you? What about you? Come on, where are you? See, this is the time when I'll find it, when I'm not properly looking for it. Or just, boom, there, there it is, look, there. No, that's not it, that's some other fungus. Now, could this, I think this is the one that I see repeatedly. This one doesn't look quite as red, but could this be my amethyst deceiver? However, 
It's a lot later in the year now, or in the season now, and it's just, they've just gone to smush. Lost all the purpleness. I think I might have to admit defeat. I've, I think I've run out of time. So unfortunately, yes, I kind of did run out of time. I mean, I would love to have just given all week to try and find this fungus, but the thing is, even if I did, I don't think I would have found it because I think I'm just a little bit too late in the season to see them, to see them purple anyway. Maybe I did find them. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Let me know if you know, because I am a little bit bummed out, but I guess there's always next year to try and see them. I hope you enjoyed this brief look into the magical world of mushrooms and what they can offer us for rewilding. Be sure to check out Mossy Earth because they do really, really good work. But until next time, thanks for watching. Leave curious. Okay, check this out. I love this kind of thing, right? From this like tree that's just completely fallen in half, you've got another beech growing. Now, I don't know whether if this has, this is the other tree, whether if one's just seeded in there, but you've also got a holly growing out of there as well. That's just so cool succession